Fred, Fred, the trivia Fred. You, you guys going to have a club there? I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Obviously. So we're in our illegal structure on our illegal land. That we're getting kicked off of. Um, so I'm going to give you just a little bit of an overview of the four plus pages of notes I have on why you should not go to the city and why anything that you try to do is going to be illegal on this new to be defined location. Of course, not anywhere near. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, 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 what town? What? <laughs> what, is so, what is this, Matthew? This what is, is a start Nevada? of the result Dude, of... I don't know, but look at it. That's what used to be in that space. Oh my god, that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we the can aspire. The down in the Players Club. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> New Year's Eve bash. We've got a high, high bar to hit. I don't even <laughs> yeah. understand what those bottoms are. They're like spandex without an ass. Yeah, it's for booty clapping. I thought you meant like what those bottoms are, like what those asses are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we met with Rachel Flynn. She's the director of planning and building develop the department uh -huh. and the acting director of economic and workforce development, which is weird. Uh, and Scott Miller, who is in zoning. Importantly, Scott has been there for over a decade, which means he was there during the scandals resulting in two grand jury indictments, which I'll send you a link to uh, if you remind me. One of the findings was that inspectors went to a house, cited several children's toys in the yard as evidence of blight. I heard about that. Uh, the house incurred $35,000 in fines, preventing them from refinancing. Then, lo and behold, a friend of the city inspectors who did this comes along and buys it at fire sale prices. Uh, two grand jury indictments, no major reforms appear to have occurred. The mayor, Jean Kwan, former mayor, made some noise about, oh, reforms happened. But uh, it's unclear that any reforms actually resulted. Just really briefly, did you see that news clip of Jean Kwan getting in some random person's car um, when they were doing a walk along international full fire against prostitution or whatever? She just, she just got in somebody's people car? People who weren't with her event, she just like got in the backseat of their car and was like, oh, hi, guys! <laughs> <laughs> Thinking that they were... Was she, a pro was she, like, trying to hook? That was the joke. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she did pay off all those tickets she got for running red lights while on her cell phone. So, <laughs> this meeting was last Tuesday. It uh, lasted, like, an hour and a half-ish. Murdered and Brian, two of the owners, two of the three owners here. Brian is an actual commercial realtor as well. I'm going to post this with the sound after we're clear of any responsibility here, not sure. before. We're there as well. So basically, Rachel like came in, made it clear that she was not going to in any way work with us. The issues to her are both that we are using this property for anything, even just parking would require a staff a staff review, which costs at least two point eight thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars. They can approve or deny it at their discretion. They consider the aesthetic impact on the neighborhood and a bunch of other bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, that is the least stringent and cheapest possible review. More onerous is a conditional use permit, or they can just tell you it's not allowed at all. Uh, work live and live work mean different things related to the percent that can be residential use versus commercial. We are actually allowed to have, I forget which, I think work live here because of a new regulation that passed, I think December of last year, allowing for use in interesting ways, allowing quote unquote, for use lots. of, right, for the regular lots against Mandela. They're like, what do we do with these? I guess they can be work live. Uh, you still need a conditional use permit. And there are minimum size issues. It was something like 800 square feet per unit required parking. And only, I think it was only 30% of it by size can be used for residential. Basically like a whole bunch of onerous requirements. She made it really clear that even though she understands this property is under contract for sale. And in fact, sitting on Scott Miller, the guy in the meeting from Zoning's desk, are the plans from Happy Hounds ready to be stamped. Um, they don't care. They, once something has been brought to our attention, and I'm considering, after we're clear of this, doing a Sunshine Act request to get any email mentioning our address or my name to the city oh, yeah. to show that she, in fact, just did it because she was pissed about... Yeah, who has a complaint? She was my guess is she just did it because she was pissed that she got interviewed. Um... Zoning and build re building regulations appear to be different for RVs. If you have a license plate, according to this Scott Miller guy, it's the DMV's issue versus the building department. But you can't live in an RV as your house, was how he put it. You can park but can't live in an RV at your house. Uh, there are some micro quarters setups, like one approved as a test. Each dwelling unit, they're like, but each dwelling unit counts towards your allowed density, and this is zone specific. 
There are at most one, but probably zero trailer parks within Oakland. There's some mobile home combining zone regulations S6 for earthquake safety that they talked about. 4801 Shattuck has some modular setup occurring with like city permission. They consider that different. Um, there are no tiny home zoning rules here. And to pass a new zoning rule or to change any of these requires an ordinance passed by city council. Rachel, who's in this meeting, heads the planning commission, which is an advisory panel to council. Um, that's as far as I got on writing them up. So we need to, I'm like, what do we need to do to make this as compliant as we can? We have to submit drawings immediately for building in code review, and we have to do uses and design review. There is a container cafe on San Pablo somewhere between 16th and 17th that they said they could send us the plans yep. for to kind of, so this, this was in, this page was in response to me being like, you know, to make these as compliant as possible, like, what do I have to do to get this process started? I'm trying to sell these non-site specific, blah, blah, blah. Um, even if it's just dead storage, because we came back to like, what is actually wrong with this? Even if all that these are is containers sitting here empty or used for storage, you still need a design review for where they're sitting on the site, which is like the biggest and crock of shit I've ever heard in my life. Pull like, everything off the property while it was in review okay. so they could assess the design and then we could put everything back on the property under the condition that they um even if i'm like what about construction sites like can't we just have this bitch doing the doggy daycare thing pull out her construction permit earlier oh, language bro right um <laughs> they're like no those actually also have to submit plans very specifically for where their staging areas are it's like everything um structure for the containers would be subject to building code. Um, but if it's a trailer, then it appears to be a DMV issue. But then you can't live in it. You can't live in it. Um, uh, whatever that means. That someone lives in something. They can't. It's so the I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, we talked about, yeah, like, does any... But yeah, of course, help yourselves. Um, we talked about, like, does anybody do temporary storage? They're, they said the only thing allowed is Christmas tree sales, get some weird temporary permit, but nothing else, according to them. Um, so they do something when a complaint, when there's a complaint or when something is brought to their attention, their bureaucratic process starts, and according to them, is irrevocable, and they can't slow it down or speed it up or anything, which is obviously a straight-up lie. Um, so what happens is an inspector comes out, a notice of violation is issued, and then... You have 30 days to comply or the fine start, which start at, it starts at like a thousand dollars per 1, inspection, 1500 per visit to re-inspect. Have we been Technically, uh, I don't think so. It'll go to Brian, but what they told us was that it would happen late last week or early this week. I My was, guess is I that I was it's... told that somebody was, had been poking around like a day or two or three after that meeting. And trying to give paperwork to somebody. It might have been Miranda. That's hilarious. Um, that somebody was trying to give paperwork to. I don't remember for sure. Um, I think she saw him, but someone else. Like, I remember the lot. Okay. I there, yard dogged on a couple of them, too, that were poking around. Like there are weird issues <laughs> with their right to enter a property. Basically, they're allowed to if they feel like there's anything dangerous. It's this weird, no warrant needed thing caused issues in a lot of places because like in austin um i read a lot about this and dealt with it slightly but often ex-cops will run these city inspection departments it's like their pseudo retirement thing like they fake an injury stop you know pull their early pension and then start pulling another salary and getting and eventually get another pension from this other city job so they'll just like fucking like my buddy's place uh reed who has a goat in like the middle of Austin and had a giant pig roast in his yard. He just built all this shit. He's a fucking mechanical engineer and he's like, I'm just going to do it. And they like showed up 10 cops with their friends with badges, like one of whom was then in the planning department, not still a cop and just like burst in. Of course he has it on like video and everything, which is another thing to think about with this new place. So I'm happy to help set up, but you probably already know how to. Um, so yeah, they're weird and they have like extra legal ability. They have unclearly defined legal ability to just enter, whether you oh, like it or man. not. And those freaking government officials love um, having unclearly defined Yeah. Although privileges. he said they won't enter if they see a dog or a man with a gun behind the door. <laughs> so Murdered, one of the two owners, he's like, got a giant dog you can borrow for a month if you want. <laughs> I'm like, I might take you up on that. Um, 
they said something about this being straight M40 zoning, that this was a trucking company, might have been storage. Uh, it's up to the zoning inspector's due diligence to describe, to research what this was used as and what may or may not be grandfathered. Uh, when I mentioned, I'm like, so technically, if I leave behind just our garden beds, our raised garden beds, which are finally working after failing a bunch of times, if I technically leave those here, you're telling me that I will start incurring at least $1,500 a day fines. And the guy's like, Scott is like, oh, well, uh, community gardens, there's different roles. If you're not selling the produce, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, uh, so we could leave the garden beds here for a minute. And that's about it. And yeah. the chickens? Problem. I, it was unclear. Yeah. Um, so good. It's, it's unclear. None of them. Favorite, so. yeah. <laughs> none of them had. I was going to move the chickens out and say that a majority of the people using this, uh, a chickens. majority of the residents have already left. <laughs> <laughs> Our chickens. We don't tell them that they are chickens. Part. Seventeen. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> none of them had. We Heather asked, and I'm glad you did. Heather was like, this is slightly different, but do any of you know if there's a right to sleep ordinance in Oakland? And they just looked really confused at the concept. Even after we explained it, they were like, yeah, I have no idea. Uh, their main advice was that we submit anything before we do it. Like, I've never had someone more directly tell me, ask permission, right. which is like, you know, opposite, obviously, of all this startup bullshit. Right. Mm -hmm. um, basically, they want me, like, if I want to do something legitimately to, before I even lease it, bring in the address and be like, what is this zoned? What is allowed? What is not allowed? Blah, blah, blah. So that's, that's pretty much what uh, I told the owner of this new spot that I was going to do. But lo and behold, there's the internet and I don't have to go and, <laughs> and ask all the city officials. Well, you uh, shouldn't. What um, we're going to do. I shouldn't really have to anyway. You shouldn't do it. And that's like the main point of me. I okay. do want to go in and ask them like, so if, I just, you know, hypothetically, if I was looking to raise the fence height in my yard that exists, you know, if I wanted to raise the fence height for security purposes by 10 feet, so I want, we want 10 feet. That's, that's our goal. 10 foot of fence or 10 feet more of fence? 10 feet more of fence. This is a lot. Yeah. I mean, well, that, I mean that's, just, that's just to be ridiculous. I tech. think that's covered by the muni code stuff, and we may have some notes yeah. in addition to that yeah, before we, you even ask. We can spend some time just researching this tonight because um, the entire planning code is online. So if you it won't hurt that, to do. My main, point, is, so. my main point is not to tell them the address. So yeah, I brought no, up, no, what about no. Walmart? Walmart's well known around the country to allow RVs to, for several days at a time, park right park and sleep in their lots yeah are they out of compliance and rachel's who looked like she had a cactus up her anus the entire time is and like well was what you guys were at that moment uh, right <laughs> really prickly cactuses but just comply <laughs> while, comply, $10, comply <laughs> while while I go on the news and claim that I'm incredibly supportive Girl, of this idea and have practice. explicitly in my job description encouragement of sustainable development. A uh, little mm -hmm. ironic. So she said that, you know, they probably technically are in violation. I'm like, you know, well, what about, well, I'm you know, how do you even right tell? Now, <laughs> Right, um, well, which I may actually do automatically. Yeah, we can just back them up with um, every single RV. Yeah, then we we'll can just get monitor on our side, VIN right? numbers right? and uh, license plates of every single vehicle for parked for more than a day at Walmart. Yeah, and complain about occupancy and just completely jam. Well, I mean, system. every day from a new email address for every new development here, there should certainly be in. Yeah, with unique computer generated language that'd be fun um there's only two city wow. inspectors yeah. for oakland so. yeah two city inspectors for all of oakland um so the last really meaningful thing was well two things one was i'm like how do you even tell that someone that was really it was clear she was not going to work with us it was like we have to be out of here in 30 days come hell or high water or we're all fighting over who pays massive fines and wasting time on it yeah um, so I was like, you know, how do you even tell that someone lives somewhere? Like I've got a bunch of friends working at all these crazy startups. And every time I go down to Google, for example, like they have every meal served there. There are walls of washing machines, showers. I swear every time day or night that I'm there, there's a bunch of people and some of them are asleep on armchairs. This is all true too. 
like, are they, uh, do they need residential permitting? And she said, and I'm going to make her fucking like hate her life for having said this, because this is how you attack people on something like this, in my opinion, from my massive experience of it working once. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, she goes, it's a case by case basis. Well, guess what, bitch? Like, it's not a case by case basis. Your job is to interpret your fucking roles that people who make more than you and are voted in tell you are your rules to interpret. So if it's a case by case basis, that means it's not real. And that means you're not doing your job. And that means that that's broken and something that we're going to exploit. Uh, so that to me is the, the most salient, broader, immediate opportunity for this. Just attacking that whole idea. Because everybody knows it's bullshit. Um, what else? They, so we talked about like the logistics of, you know, if you're actually going to find us, like, You've made it clear you're going to. How does this actually work? She's like, well, an inspector comes there. A notice of violation will be sent. Then we'll have 30 days from then to be in full compliance. After that, it's 1.5K for each reinspection. Um, technically, they can do that every day at their discretion. They can literally start billing you 1.5K, which is... Well, if there are different things for urban gardens, why don't we get out of here this whole thing into a garden plot for like the next oh, that'd be fun. Three, four um yeah. well I want to get out of the lease to be honest ah, yeah. yeah oh there's that so what we should do is move yeah I mean it fucking sucks and I'm sorry and like it's gonna be way cooler it is gonna be way cooler so I so here's the thing we, we know this place is fucked <clears throat> we know we're gonna have to figure out the logistics of moving out of here fine Let's yeah. do that later. Let's talk about what what do we do going forward with this new place. So the most useful thing that I think we can all get out of this over the next several years is an ongoing wiki slash playbook. And I'll stop.